एस चांद प्रेजेंट्स एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम वेलकम बैक टू एस चांद अकेडमी सो विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ द वीडियो विद द सीरीज सोल्यूशन ऑफ द लेजेंडरी डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन so legendary differential equation was a second order differential equation which was written in uh, the previous part of the video and the solution of which needs to be found out so uh, we need to find out the solution about x equals to 0 so we have checked that x equals to 0 is a is an ordinary point for the legendary differential equation and therefore we were able to assume the series solution in the form of y equals to sigma a n x raised to the power n in that Since legendary differential equation is of second order, therefore we need to find out two derivative of this. That is, first order derivative and second order derivative, which needs to be substituted back in the given differential equation. That is, legendary differential equation, and then we need to find out the values of the constants. So, in the first part of the video, we have covered till the uh, substitution part. That is, substituting the expression for y, y dash, and y double dash in the given differential equation. in both the forms in the compacted form and in the expanded form so in this part of the video we will find out the values of the constants for more details on the topic you can refer to the book from s chand publishing details of which are given on this portion and link is given in the description box so this is the expression we have written for the expanded part of the uh, series solution so in this one we can see that this is corresponding to y double dash this is corresponding to Minus x square y double dash. This is corresponding to minus two x y dash, and this is alpha into alpha plus one y. Now we need to find out the values of the constants. So we need to equate the various uh, the coefficients of various parts of x. So let us start with to equate the coefficient of equate the coefficients of various parts of x various parts of x so let us try to equate the coefficient of x raised to the power 0 that is the constant one so in this one the the constant is this and this one so 2 a2 and in the rest of rest of the terms they do not contain any constant so therefore we will be we can uh, you know equate the coefficient of various parts of x in this one and if we go for x raised to the power n so we need to equate the coefficient in the compacted form so this was the compacted form so this this was the so till this one so this is the compacted form of the differential equation now in this one we see that the general uh, the the highest power which uh, involves x is x raised to the power n so if we equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n in this one we will be getting the recurrence relation so in the video where we have covered the series solution of the differential equation we have told you both the methods that is equating the coefficient one by one and then to write down the recurrence relation for this so if we equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n in, in this one we can write down the uh, uh, the recurrence relation for that so we'll continue with the uh, writing down of the recurrence relation so before that you can see here that if we equate the coefficient of x raised to the power 0 so it becomes 2a2 plus alpha into alpha plus 1 a0 equals to 0 so a2 can be written as minus alpha into alpha plus 1 divided by 2 a0 so that's how we will get the value of a2 now as i said in the previous videos also for the series solution that the drawback of this term by term equating is that we need to equate n number of times that is now with this uh, by equating the coefficient of x raised to the power 0 i got the value of of only one constant while if we equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n then we will get the recurrence relation so let us try to equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n now in this portion 
uh, in this expanded form, sometimes it is little tedious to write down the nth uh, to equate the coefficient of x uh, n x raised to the power n. So this can be done using the compacted form. So since it is written in front of us, so we will use this only. So we can we can imagine that that next we need to write down two more terms here. So next term would have been n plus one into n a n plus 1 x raised to the power n minus 1 and one more term will be written for x raised to the power n. So uh, we will go back to the compacted form and from that we can see here that in this one, in this portion. So this portion if we write down the, uh, equ uh, if we equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n, we need to substitute n equals to n plus 2 because it is, uh, uh, we can always go on the positive side because it is a series and it contains infinite number of terms. So we can always substitute n as n plus 2 or n plus 1, but we cannot substitute as an n minus 2 uh, if uh, the value of n has to be, you know, restricted upon. So to equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n, this will be used as it is. This will be used as it is and this will also be used as it is. So from this, we can equate the coefficient of x raised to the power n and for that we need to substitute n equals to n plus 2 in this portion. So it can be written as on equating the coefficient of x raised to the power n. So this n will be substituted as n plus 2. So it becomes n plus 2, n plus 1 and the subscript will change to a n to a n plus 2. Then minus, this will be written as it is. Summation will not be written here because we are uh, writing down the coefficient of x raised to the power n. So that is why summation will not be uh, considered here. So n a n plus alpha into alpha plus 1 a n is equals to 0. And if we write down this a n plus 2 as, so rest of the portion will take to left hand side, right hand side, n into n minus 1 minus n minus alpha into alpha plus 1. Everything will be taken to right hand side except a n plus 2 here and this is n plus 1, n plus 2 and here it is a n. So if we simplify this thing, so this becomes n is square minus n minus n. So this is uh, minus 2n. This is minus 2n. This is minus 2n here. So it is minus 2n here. So if we uh, simplify this expression, we will be getting n is square minus alpha is square plus n minus alpha over n plus 1 into n plus 2 into a n which can further be simplified as n minus alpha, alpha can be taken out. So n minus alpha, n plus alpha plus 1 divided by n plus 1 into n plus 2 a n and this left hand side is a n plus 2. So this becomes the recurrence, this is, this is the recurrence relation for the given differential equation which is true for all values of n starting from 0. Now we can see here that the difference in the subscript on the left side and right hand side of the coefficient is of 2. Therefore, we can understand that one uh, type of coefficient that is a0, a, uh, the positive one that is a2, a4, a6 will be found out in terms of a0. And the odd coefficient that is a1, a3, a5 will be found out in terms of a1. So a0 at the values of a0 and a1 cannot be found out because they will be the two arbitrary constant which our solution must have for a second order differential equation without initial condition. Therefore, this difference of 2 will be uh, explained in that way. Now, if we substitute n equals to 0 in this one, we will get this value which we have already uh, got by equating the coefficient of x raised to the power 0. So, if we substitute n equals to 0 in this one, we will get minus alpha, alpha plus 1, n plus 1, that is 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, a naught. So, this can give us this value as well as rest of all the values. So that's how this recurrence relation will be used. But now there will be few things which we need to take care of. 
Now in this expression, in this recurrence relation, in this recurrence relation, it is clearly seen that n minus alpha term is there. So if we write a2 has already been written, let us say uh, for n is equals to 1. Let us take the value n equals to 1. So we will get a3. So a3 will be written as, let us take alpha uh, minus outside so that it becomes alpha minus 1 and it becomes alpha plus 2 and uh, uh, in the denominator we are getting 1 plus 1 that is 2 dot 3 and it is a1 here because we are substituting the value of n as 1. And when we substitute the value of n as 2, so we will be getting a4. So a4 is minus when we'll substitute n equals to 2 here, we'll get alpha minus 2 and alpha plus 3 divided by n has been substituted as 2. So it becomes 3 dot 4, 2 plus 2. And here we are getting a2. Since we are getting a2, this has already been explained in the uh, video of series solution that we cannot afford to have the value of a4 in a0 rather it should be further uh, the value of a2 should be substituted as the expression for a0. So we need to substitute the value of the expression for a0, a2 in this uh, a4 and which will be giving us this expression alpha minus 2 alpha alpha plus 1 alpha plus 3 divided by this will become 3.4.2. So can be written as factorial 4 a naught. Right? This is a4. Okay. Now here a very important phenomena is occurring that the expression for alpha are uh, having minus uh, expression that is alpha minus n type of thing. Now since we are not putting any restriction on alpha, alpha is any positive number. So it, it can be either odd or even. So if, so this, uh, let me write down the solution first. So yx was a0 plus a1x plus a2x square and so on and so forth. Since all the e1 that is a2, a4 will be getting in terms of a0, therefore we will divide it into two parts. One will be a with a0, another will be with a1. So a0 is 1 plus, so this is uh, minus alpha into alpha plus 1 divided by it can be written as 2 factorial and it is x square because it is 2 therefore the power of x will be 2 and then a4 will be written. So a4 will be with positive sign. So with alpha minus 2 alpha alpha plus 1 alpha plus 3 divided by 4 factorial x raised to the power 4. And similarly, expressions will be written for a1. So a1x, that is a1x minus a3. So a3 is alpha minus 1, alpha plus 2 divided by 3 factorial. And here the power of x will be odd. And here a very important phenomena has been generated which will give rise to legendary polynomial. If we look at these expressions, so this is the expression for a2, this is the expression for a4 and we know that rest of all the constants will carry these expressions along with some new terms. Similarly, this is expression for a3 and expression for a5 will also carry this expression plus some new terms in, in multiplication of course. If we look at this then here we, if we put this uh, two, we, we need to study two cases when alpha becomes odd or when alpha becomes even. So we need to uh, look very carefully that as soon as alpha takes even value, as soon as alpha takes even value, all the expressions, suppose, suppose it is taking value 2, if alpha is 2, then immediately on substituting value of alpha as 2 here, then this term and rest all the terms will be terminated. Rest of all the terms will become zero. Therefore, the series will be converted from a series into a polynomial. Similarly, if, uh, if the uh, value of alpha is odd, 
Then we need to look at this y2. We, we already know that the uh, coefficient of a0 is considered as y1x and coefficient of a1 is considered as y2x. So when as soon as alpha takes odd value, suppose it takes 1 because we have already calculated these expressions that is why we are taking the values which are uh, clearly visible. So if it takes alpha equals to 1, then this term and the rest of all the terms will be terminated. They will be taking value 0 because of alpha minus the odd, ex, uh, odd number. So this series will be terminated into a polynomial. So we can say that does not matter what value alpha takes, it is a positive integer. So either it will take odd value or it will take the even value. Then the solution the solution will be a sum of series plus polynomial. Series plus the polynomial. When alpha is even, the y1 will be polynomial and y2 will remain series. When alpha will be even, y1 will be polynomial and y2 will be series. So this, this polynomial is called legendary polynomial. This is called legendary polynomial. And why it is called one of the solution of the legendary equation? Because there is one more solution which is in form of a series, but we are not bothered about that because we would like to study the legendary polynomial. Therefore, the part of the legendary solution where the, you know, the uh, series is terminating into a polynomial is called legendary polynomial and which was the solution which is one of the solution of the legendary equation. Now we will write down the uh, this uh, form of this legendary polynomial. So this is represented as px pnx and this is sigma r is from 0 to capital N the value of capital N is alpha by 2 if alpha is even, if alpha and this is if even and if it is odd. So the value of R will be 0 to N, the index is there, minus 1 raised to the power R, 2N minus 2R factorial divided by. So this is the expression for legendary polynomial. Pnx, this is called the legendary polynomial of nth order. So Pnx is summation r is from 0 to capital N, where capital N will take the value as n by 2 if n is even and n minus 1 by 2 if n is odd. Remember this n is the, take, the value which uh, alpha is taking. So this is called the legendary polynomial of nth order. So this is called legendary polynomial. legendary polynomial of nth order. If we write down this in terms of alpha, then it will become legendary polynomial of alpha order because we are taking here that we are we are assuming here that alpha is taking the value the odd or even which can be written in terms of n. Therefore, we have uh, written this expression in form of n. So this becomes the legendary polynomial. So uh, we are not bothered about the complete solution of the legendary equation, but only one part of the legendary uh, one part of the solution that is called as legendary polynomial. So the expression for legendary polynomial is written here. Uh, one of the property of legendary polynomial is that that it has been it will it will satisfy this property. That is, if we substitute the value of x as one, then p n one is always one. So that's all about legendary polynomial. So today we have discussed the solution of the legendary differential equation, which is a second order differential equation with variable coefficients. The coefficient of the second order derivative was 1 minus x squared. The derivative, the coefficient of first order derivative that y dash was minus 2x and the coefficient of y was alpha into alpha plus 1 where alpha is a positive integer. Now we need to find out the solution about x equals to 0. Therefore we need to first find out whether it is an ordinary point or not. 
since we need to find out the solution about x equals to 0, which is, uh, you know, we can find out that it is an ordinary point for the legendary differential equation. Since x naught equals to 0 is an ordinary point, therefore, the uh, series solution may be assumed for legendary polynomial, legendary equation as y equals to sigma a n x raised to the power n. Since the, the given differential equation was of second order, therefore, first order derivative and second order derivative have been uh, calculated for that, which have been substituted back in the given differential equation. And then the coefficients have been equated for, to find out the value of the coefficients, that is uh, a naught a1 and an. We have written the recurrence relation for that. And after writing down the recurrence relation, we have seen that uh, even number of coefficients we found out in terms of a0 and odd uh, coefficient that is a1, a3, a5, we found in terms of a1. Therefore, we have seen that the solution for the legendary equation have been, uh, in, they, it has been uh, incorporating with two arbitrary constant that is a0 and a1 which is a condition uh, that uh, it's a, the number of arbitrary constant in the solution of a differential equation should be equal to the order of the differential equation. Then we have seen that if alpha takes even value, then one of the solution is terminating from series to polynomial. If alpha is odd, then the another solution of the uh, legendary polynomial is terminating to polynomial. Uh, from series. Therefore, the final solution will always be a combination of a series and a polynomial. So, this polynomial part is called the legendary polynomial and that is why the legendary polynomial is called as one of the solution of the differential equation because there is one more solution which is a series solution for which we are not uh, focusing upon. So, we are focusing upon only the legendary polynomial. So, the expression for the legendary polynomial has also been written here. So, P and X has been uh, can be seen as the legendary polynomial and the subscript stands for the the order of the uh, legendary polynomial which can be related to the uh, alpha into alpha plus 1 in the given differential equation. So, this n is uh, corresponding to that alpha. So, this index on the right hand side for the summation it is going from r equals to 0 to capital N where capital N will be taken as n by 2 and n minus 1 by 2 when n is even or odd. Uh, respectively. So, if n is even, it will be taken as n by, n by 2 and if n is odd, it will be taken as n minus 1 by 2. This legendary polynomial has many properties. One very important one is considered as p and one is 1, which will be used in finding out the uh, value of the coefficient. So, that is all about legendary uh, polynomial. So, in today's lecture, we have found out the solution of a legendary equation which is having one of the solution as the legendary polynomial. So, legendary polynomial are having lot of uh, applications in our daily life. So, uh, many uh, applications can be studied from the book, uh, which is from S. Chan Publishing, detail of which is given here and link is given in the description box. I am sure you must have liked the video. Please do like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get the notification for the upcoming videos. In the upcoming videos, we will be discussing Bessel's equation. Thank you very much. All rights resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.